Forget Coach Prime. Readers suggest new nicknames for Day and Sanders at Colorado. Topmeyer. My bags are packed for vacation, but unlike Day and Sanders, I cannot fathom owning Louis Vuitton. My luggage is Ricardo. I don't detect much Louis at Colorado, either. Sanders' year two roster appears built for mediocrity, not luxury. Before I shove off for some time away, let's answer mail from my devoted readers, who suggest a couple of new nicknames for Coach Prime. Weigh in on John Calipari and sound off on Brian Kelly. Gary writes, excellent article about the prime jerk, Sanders. He's a self-promoting jerk. Remember when he doused Tim McCarver with a bucket of water during a live interview that McCarver was doing? Real class on Sanders' part. He always has been a hot dog and showboat and all about me. I hope Colorado doesn't win a game this year and maybe, just maybe, those folks will catch a clue. My response, although I wouldn't have dumped a bucket of water on Tim McCarver, I never was a fan of his. I don't mind an athlete being a bit of a hot dog. But, being a jerky keyboard warrior as a power four coach when he's got 100 other things to address makes Dayan seem childish, self-absorbed and, most importantly, it shows he's not focused on main task. He showed his rump by punching down and taking a cheap shot at an FCS player on social media. George writes, Dayan is now known as subprime in Colorado. My response, good one. I might have to borrow that. Sanders can go back to being prime when he finishes a season above .500 at Colorado. Steve writes, good article. I am a true blue fan of Kentucky and have been hoping for Calipari's exit the past four years. While he was a hero early on, his inability to adjust and be worth his salary in game coaching has been suspect. His aura as a coach reminds me of a food recipe where fine ingredients are mixed together and then the chef either burns or undercooks the final product. I am in the camp that says his arrogance, age and aptitude will not make for another long run for a natty. Time will tell. Not sure Pope can either, but he is a breath of fresh air for Kentucky, even if it takes him some time. My response, Calipari correctly stated after his exit that Kentucky needed to hear a new voice, and so he decided it was time to depart. I'm not sure Kentucky's results will improve, but it must be therapeutic right now for Big Blue Nation to have someone other than Calipari as the coach. He'll make Arkansas consistently relevant. Does he have another national title in him? I lean no, but he might have another Final Four in him. I'll set the over, under on Pope being Kentucky's coach at four half years. I'm not sure which side of that line I'd bet. David writes, interesting comments in your piece on coaches expected to face pressure this season. Surprised to see Shane Beamer escape the list. My response, well Mushamp got five years at South Carolina. I think Beamer will get at least five, too. His 15 wins through two seasons bought him goodwill. He surrendered a bit of that after last year's regression to 5 minus 7. I don't consider Beamer on the hot seat, but if he has another lackluster season and survives, his seat would be warm in 2025. My pressure list included five coaches. If it had included a couple more, I would have listed Beamer. James writes, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your article on Brian Kelly. Very well done. My response, thank you. I appreciate support of readers, such as my next reader. Scott writes, amazing love affair you have going on with Kelly. Not sure why he deserves so much hype and featured articles. My response, I don't think my latest column on Kelly counts as a love affair. One could even consider it mild criticism. Mike writes, I was surprised to hear Brian Kelly, in his finest Southern accent, claim that LSU does not buy players. Really, I wonder if the players know that. My response, Kelly's comment on not buying transfers made him sound outdated. What he should have said was, LSU isn't in the market of overpaying for one and done transfers. It would rather invest in players who want to be at LSU for three seasons. Kelly doesn't covet Lane Kiffin's portal king throne. He wants to do it more like George's Kirby Smart. That will require elite recruiting, developing and, yes, nil deals. Jim writes, UGA ain't sweating. My response, I'm sure it isn't. A lot of programs tried to imitate Nick Saban in Alabama. Georgia and Smart nailed the blueprint. Most others failed. Now, Georgia will be imitated, but rarely duplicated. LSU is among the few schools that perhaps could pull it off, though.